according to Forbes, you're the 10th richest person in Australia. 5.4 US billion dollars. The 426th richest person in the world. It's a bit mind-blowing. Did you ever think that that was even imaginable or possible? No, and it wasn't the plan. When you think about it, uh, being rich shouldn't really be a state of mind. It should be something that's a side effect of something else that's much more important. Richard, thank you for having me for a beer with the billionaire. Thank you and cheers. Cheers. We're here in your house in Bexley. Tell me about growing up here. I grew up in a house that's uh, part of this property it was just down the sort of back corner of the property. I went to Bexley Primary School, which was effectively three blocks from here. Have you moved away from Bexley? Have you stayed here the whole I time? I started my first business, a business called Rock Repairs, which I repaired musical instruments, mainly guitars. You know, I have a bit of a guitar fetish, don't I? <laughs> There's a couple of them. Well, this one here right behind you, Prince played that guitar. Yes, you can see it. That's the picture of him holding, the, that's the actual guitar. And so you bought it from the person who... Uh, this went up for auction and I, I bought it from an auction in, in London. Can you tell me how much you bought, you paid? Uh, that was £85,000. Is, is that your most expensive guitar? That is my most expensive guitar. Your first business was repairing guitars. So I started as a musician and I met Angus uh, Young at uh, a, a hall in Hurstville, called Meron Hall. Mm. Uh, backstage, because we were both on the on the show. The show, yeah. And he was just asking about my guitar, and I said, actually, I, I'm setting up a business repairing guitars, and he turned up at my place, or, and I started doing work for him and for Malcolm. It was a very successful business, but it couldn't scale. So I then started consulting, and I accidentally got a couple of customers that were in international freight forwarding. Freight, I think. They both had systems problems and really complex, messy manual procedures and I could see there was something missing. You could see a problem. Right, and I started building a, a piece of software. I basically sat in the basement in my house in New Newtown for a year and a half just writing a platform and talking to potential customers about what they wanted. So I wrote a system that did all of the back office and all of the front office for international freight forwarding. WiseTech, you've had an aggressive acquisition strategy. I think it's acquired, now correct me if I'm wrong, about 40 companies in the... About 45. 45, which is phenomenal. What are the things that are you looking for in companies that you acquire? I like people that love solving problems and want to grip the problem hard and make it go away. If you surround yourself with very smart, resilient, curious, questioning people that have that ability to want to solve problems, it's a, it's a, fun, it's a fun job. Who do you think we should have on the next issue of Beer with the Billionaire? I know Scott and Mike reasonably well, and we've worked together on a number of projects. So Mike Cannon-Brooks and Scott Farquhar from Atlassian. Correct. Mike Cannon-Brooks, almost accidentally in 2007, gave me a brilliant idea that changed their business model dramatically. Oh. He just mentioned what they did at Atlassian, and I took that model and I changed it a little bit, and it turned into the killer change for WiseTech that made the business much, much better. So it was a conversation across a, a wine at a, at a function. But Mike, I, I've always been indebted to him for that little stroke of brilliance that just sort of popped into his head and popped into my head. He was talking about the way he commercialises software and I sort of took the idea and turned it into the way we commercialise software, which is not the same, but it stems from that fundamental idea. I just built another level on top of it. We were all very passionate. So I think if you could get to talk to Mike and Scott, I think that would be a great thing to do. Mike and Scott, if you're watching this, I know you don't like to be associated with billionaire status, but let's do it. Well, on that note, Richard, thank you very much for having us, and it was lovely to meet you. Cheers.